What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Ticker Fee video and welcome to the Ticker Fee family. So what we're going to be talking about today is CTRM or Caster Maritime, but the new update. So that's going to be the announcement of yet again another vessel acquisition. So we're going to talk about that and how that affects the charts as well as the um, <clears throat> Baltic Exchange Dry Index. And then again, we'll finish this video off with a chart analysis. So for those that have been following me so far, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. As always, it means so much. And if you're here for the first time, welcome to the channel. I talk about stocks, what the companies provide, what they do, how it affects the charts, why it goes up, why it goes down. Real simple, straight to the point. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if this is your first time checking out my channel, there are many stocks on this channel, but what I wanted to point out specifically is if you wanna know what's going on with CTRM, I talk about them quite a few times, but there's quite a few updates that you might wanna know. So I just wanted to point that out, that way you know if you've never heard of CTRM or Castor Maritime. But just so you know, they're an international provider of shipping transportation services through its ownership of ocean going cargo vessels. So keep that in mind, they transfer commodities. The first thing I wanna do is look at the chart and see what's going on. So currently this happened on the 9th. So as you can see, it's on the red, which I'm actually not surprised, but I wanna see what it is. And so according to that news to see how it affects the chart. So you wanna always take a look at that and see what that catalyst is. Okay, so April 9th, Castor Maritime yet again announces a vessel acquisition. That is quite a few. So, a diversified global shipping company announced that it entered through a separate wholly owned subsidiary into agreement to purchase a 2011 Japanese built Panamax dry bulk carrier from an unaffiliated third party for a purchase price of $18.48 million. That's, that's quite a few. So, with that being said, they're pretty pumped about it. They're pretty excited about it. But what I wanted to point out is if you actually check out their website, which I've been going over this for a while now, but if you look, you'll see throughout 2019, you'll see the purchase of new vessels over and over and over. So they are getting this opportunity to transfer this product from point A to point B, which is gonna be that continued uh, residual uh, passive income, right? basically just from going to point a to point b over and over and over and dropping off the products which is amazing so i really like that but i wanted to point that out that this is not the first time this is quite a few okay so when you're looking at the chart then you're like well why are you surprised well here's the thing it's in the red again that means that it whatever it opened up at it closed lower right so when you're looking at it you can tell actually if you look at the wick it actually went up a little bit higher to 0.552 but again it closed at it looks like 0 0.5078 now keep in mind there was a decent amount of volume there with 166 million trades but with that being said it closed in the red now why is that well think about it they just bought a dry bulk vessel for 18.5 million dollars clearly they're spending money so s sometimes that's going to be in the red so i'm actually not surprised with that being said with the support and the resistance something like that again that's going to be a long-term benefit not a short term so the first thing i want to point out i highly recommend always checking the tradingeconomics.com especially if you're looking at caster maritime that's going to allow you to understand the baltic dry index which is going to give you a lot of those numbers so with the baltic baltic dry index it fell edge down three points or 0.1 percent to 2085 on friday extending losses for a second straight session when you're looking at the charts, this is going to be another indicator or another catalyst that you might not know about. And so I wanted to show that, right? Also, if you can look, you can look at the indexes. You've got the, the Dow Jones that was up 0.80%, the S&P 500, 0.61%, and the NASDAQ 100, which was 0.36%. So that allows, again, another opportunities, another site that you can check out not only for this stock but also many others but with that being said you can look at the commodities right so that you're, you've got crude oil natural gas gasoline but then you work your way down to the bottom you got soybean right lithium copper whatever the case is again that's going to affect the charts when you're thinking about what's going on and why is it happening so again i wanted to point that out because 
this is a great opportunity for us to see. But if you look, you'll, you'll be able to see the agriculture. So again, commodities that they might be able to ship. I know they do iron and, and whatnot, things similar to that, but they have an opportunity so they can also do maybe oat or lumber or soybeans. So this is a great website and so I wanted to point this out for you. Okay, so this week I want you to see if you can notice some of these patterns. So example of popular candlestick patterns, you've got the bullish hammer pattern, the bullish engulfing candlestick, and then the bullish morning star candlestick. So with the bullish hammer pattern, it's formed of a short body with a long lower wick and is found at the bottom of a downward trend. Now this pattern is a strong indication that a reversal is about to occur. It tells you that sellers are giving up and the buyers are taking over. So see if you can check that out this week. Now the other one is the bullish engulfing candlestick. Now this pattern is formed of two candlesticks. The first candle is a short red body that is fully engulfed by a bigger green candle. Now it is perhaps the most sought out after bullish candlestick patterns as it is more confirming of a bullish move in the price of a stock. So when you're looking at this chart, again, see if you notice this. Now the pattern shows a pure and unquestionable control by the buyers and almost always results in higher trending prices. But with that being said, you've got the bullish morning star, right? Now that pattern forms at the bottom of a downtrend and is made up of three candles. Now the first candle is any long and bearish candle, and the second one is a small and indecisive, and the third candle is any long and bullish candle. So again, I feel like you might want to know that, not only just for this stock, but other stocks in the future. So check that out and see if you notice that this week. Also, I, th I feel like it, it will help you be able to read the candlestick chart when it comes to those price trends, right? Because everybody knows what a trend is. It's when something is consistently going in one direction for a period of time. Now, the same stands true for the start market. So when a stock is consistently going in one direction, up or down, over a period of time, that's a trend. Market trends can last seconds, minutes, hours, and even longer, which we've seen that before quite a few times with different stocks. But with that being said, again, keep that in mind. Watch the volume trades, and we'll continue to watch, and I'll update you on this information as soon as I find out what's going on. I really enjoy talking about this stock, so I have a huge passion about it. So guys, thank you so much for listening to this video. I really do appreciate it. And if you're here for the first time, welcome to the channel. And always guys, welcome to the Ticker Feed family. Okay, so if you've made it this far, I really do appreciate it. What I wanted to point out is that I actually just started a Patreon page. So if you wanna join the Ticker Feed community and support this channel, it would mean so much. And I really do appreciate it.